Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. We have a story here about Murdo Fraser, Conservative MSP, uh, and he's opened up um, what happened to his mother during COVID and how she died. Uh, and you can see now, really, um, from what he's saying, now we all know it's bad, but you can see from what he's saying, uh, first of all, how bad it was, but also why he has got a very deep vested interest on finding out the truth. Uh, not that the truth matters to the likes of uh, Nicola Sturgeon or Hamza Yousaf, Gene Freeman or any of those. Um, they need to cover it up, of course, because they know how bad it is, how bad it's going to look and how angry people, and rightfully so, people will be if the truth was ever to fully come out. We'll take a look at this and, uh, you know, it's just a, an example. One of many, many tragic stories uh, about uh, how people were treated, but it just comes from someone who is in a position to hopefully do something about it. Here goes. So Murdo Fraser opens up on mother's death during COVID as he questions the draconian care home restrictions. And they were, they, they were parading people behind glass. They weren't allowing people who were dying to have human contact. It was disgusting, it was dehumanizing. It was the sort of thing you expect from uh, evil dictators imposing their will against that of the people, which of course is exactly what it was. The Scottish Conservative MSP also hit out at the Scottish Government over the handling of WhatsApp scandal as well, uh, and reports suggesting Nicola Sturgeon didn't keep any from the pandemic. Well, of course she didn't, because she knew that there'd be a day of reckoning, uh, and if there's no evidence, then she knew she'd walk free after doing some of the most reprehensible and evil acts any leader could do perhaps, allegedly. Murdo Fraser has opened up about how his mother died alone and without family contact, contact in a care home during the COVID pandemic. The Scottish Conservative MSP questioned if strict restrictions in care homes were as damaging, if not more, than the virus to those in homes. The Tories business spokesman also challenged the Scottish Government over disappearing WhatsApp messages sent during lockdowns and of course it wasn't just whatsapp there was others as well everything was being burnt then when they knew that um, the allies were coming up the gate and the russians on one side of them they had the allies on the other and these people sat in their camps and were burning all the records you know they just wanted no evidence that they'd done anything wrong um, around 14,000 messages will be handed over to the uk covid19 inquiry in comparison Matt Hancock kept 100,000 messages himself during the pandemic. Former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon claimed on Tuesday she has nothing to hide and we know that she absolutely, totally does and that that is a complete barefaced lie like everything else that comes out of that evil, tight, nasty face. Um, Mr Fraser said, people like me and my family who lost loved ones due to Covid and suffered as a result of lockdown restrictions deserve the truth. Uh, yes, you do, Mr Fraser, but you're not going to get it. This is, after all, the SNP, where lying comes as easy as breathing. Uh, writing in The Scotsman, Mr Fraser told how putting his mother, who was suffering from dementia, into a care home in December 2020 was one of the hardest days of my life. She died some months later after suffering a stroke, with Mr Fraser saying he would have liked to have been able to hold her hand as she did so. Of course, it's the very least. You don't go out of this world alone. That is beyond inhumane. Uh, that was not possible because of restrictions in the care homes. Why she couldn't have caught COVID if she was dying, wouldn't you know? Uh, with the Conservative MSP questioning the impact of draconian rules introduced by our government. And there's the thing, rules, not laws. Anyone would have been able to just walk in. And of course the staff would have gone, I'm being mean, like that. Uh, and the moment any one person touches you, that's assault, but they legally can't stop you because it wasn't a law. It was a rule, and a rule isn't law. Uh, he said, others might take a different view to me, but in the case of our own family, I'd rather have been able to see, hold, and chat to my mother in what would turn out to be the last few weeks of her life, even if it did carry with it a risk of infection, rather than see, die, uh, see her die alone and without family contact. Yes, but you see, when you have sociopaths like that, Someone who has no empathy, no sympathy, no humanity. Someone who is degenerate, who 
has no soul, just an empty void filled with self-loathing and squirming evil. This is what happens. She was never loved, so she does not know love. Uh, she said, she, this woman, this is Murdo talking about his mother, she had given me life. I would have liked, as her son, to at least hold her hand as she lost hers. He added, I don't know what my mother's view on that balance of risk would have been, but neither she nor we were ever in a position to make that choice. It was one that our government made for us. Mr Fraser called on the Scottish COVID inquiry, which he has now started hearing, which has now started hearing evidence, to give careful consideration to all these issues. While he stressed he was not looking to blame anyone for that awful experience that I and my family went through, he added, I hope that with the benefit of hindsight, we will now properly consider whether negative impacts of the severe lockdowns were imposed outweighed the benefits. There were no benefits. It was all a power trip for that evil bitch. Mr Fraser also stressed the importance of having the fullest possible picture of why governments at Holyrood and Westminster took the decisions they did. And to achieve this, he said, it was vital that the Scottish and UK inquiries have access to all the information that they require. Information that has been burnt, destroyed, lost, deliberately wiped so that nothing remains. No truth can come out. No truth of the decisions made that ultimately ended the lives of thousands of people like Murdo Fraser's mother deliberately because they were all probably unionist views. They can't have that. Uh, with concerns having been raised that the messages from the former First Minister and others may have disappeared, Mr Fraser said this is simply breathtaking. The establishment of the Scottish COVID inquiry was announced by Nicola Sturgeon back in May 2020, shortly after she deleted everything. And a promise was made that all relevant material will be made available to that inquiry. This is a promise from the SNP, where promises are like pie crusts. They're made to be broken. Uh, a promise was made that all relevant would be made there. Yet it appears, he said, that even after that point, messages passing between senior government ministers and officials, which might be highly relevant to the work of the inquiry, were being deleted because they cannot afford forever the truth to come out. Miss Sturgeon told journalists on Tuesday she was committed to full transparency. Again, more complete utter horseshit pouring forth from that gash of her mouth on that evil witch's face. And she was saying this was needed in the interest of everybody uh, across this country who was affected by COVID, who was affected by the evil doings of the Wicked Witch of the North. She has no sympathy, empathy. She has no concern. And she is, without doubt, uh, a force of evil on this planet. And someone, I think, who needs to spend the rest of her shitty, miserable life alone in a cell with just her thoughts and the pictures of the 5,500 people who I firmly believe were euthanised for her political ends. I'm stopping and I'm coming up. Now, I can't begin to tell you how much I loathe that woman. She is, as I say, uh, emotionally void. She has got no humanity whatsoever. It's all about Nicola Sturgeon. It's all about power. It's all about the exercise of power because there is nothing else. There's no joy. She has a joyless existence. She was hated as a child. She was hated as an adult. And people clung round her because of the, uh, I don't know, the atmosphere of sheer evil she emanated appealed to their other, all the others of all the other psychopaths and sociopaths that politics attracts. Uh, and then they worked out and together they could do the most awful things, probably for their own pleasure. How many can we kill today? Were well, the discussions, I'm sure. Uh, and they could work out how can we impose even more misery? How can it make it look as though I am more, you know, concerned about people than anyone in Westminster? I know we'll lock them down harder. We'll lock them down faster. We'll keep them locked down longer. And we'll make sure that their lives are as miserable as mine has been. I really would rejoice and pop the champagne cork if someone told me that that woman was going to die a long, lingering, cancerous death. And I hope she does die alone. I hope she dies alone, alone, unloved, untouched, and knowing that everyone around her loathes her. That would suit me fine, because that's how she treats other people. Anyway, I'm not going to waste any more time on that. I'm going to move on. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been, um, you know, rather enlightening. Uh, and I, I'm sure we all have a bit of sympathy for Murdo Fraser and for all those who lost friends, relatives and mothers particularly 
uh, to COVID and dying alone. It's a terrible thing. Bit of a sad one, but we'll move on to some happier tunes. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.